Hussein looks like he's like in some kind of a uh, high tech research and development lab, <laughs> currently working on his next invention. It's alive. I have many inventions, many of them. That's you why know, you're in the lab. You know, you know milk. When you drink milk in the bottle, just after one week, ten days, it gets rotten. So I have yeah. it for one year in cooler. So you can keep milk for a year? A yeah. year and nothing. It won't happen. curdle? No. <laughs> wow. Speci okay, just a special, year? Special device that I invented. Interesting. That's great. Wow. Okay. okay. Gentlemen, good afternoon. <laughs> I'm Tiffany Rothman from Fielder 90211 with my wonderful and amazing co-ho, Chris Long. Here with us today, we had the pleasure of having Hussein Brown with his pre-decay baby tea cleaning yes. products. And Chase Lewis, the impressionist singer and comedian. Yes, thank you. And Wendy Wilkin, the author of Sex, Love and Cops and the Four More Cops from Melbourne, Australia. <laughs> All the way from Australia. <laughs> well, I've been here for 18 years. <laughs> so. Well, I had to make it dramatic. <laughs> You can always wait for this, right? Yeah. Yeah. Good and, afternoon. And for this. Yeah. Good afternoon. <laughs> How's everyone doing today? How's your week, Chris? My week was it was phenomenal. The weather cooled down because it got really hot for a while, and um, I enjoyed the uh, the cooler temperatures. And uh, it's easier to uh, go out and do a long bike ride. So yesterday I did a oh, about a 42 yes. mile ride. Wow! wow. You yeah. and your bike ride. He, um, he loves riding so bike. I love it when the weather's a little bit cooler. Wow. Yeah. That's so it was a good week. Yeah. And how about you, Tiffany? How was your I week? Worked. I worked uh, hard. I have You're three busy. auditions. Yeah. Ooh. I know. Yeah. She keeps bragging about that. Yeah. Today no, to I can't help, help it. You know, yeah. Chris, I, I had three it. auditions. What did you have? <laughs> I only had two, so you, you win. <laughs> what about you? Every week. Oh, oh I got an audition for this, and I got an audition for that, and I'm in this movie and that movie. <laughs> what are you doing, Chris? <laughs> I'm here, Tiffany. This is where I'm at. Actually, my my audition, one of them was for voiceover, and another one is for the theater playing and auditioning for an older lesbian. Oh, Ooh. which is great, you know. That who, sounds who fun. Yes, who changed <laughs> her tune, who changed her life, her midlife, you know, she oh. recognized who she is, and, yeah. and now she has to tell her husband and, and her kid, and it, it was... That sounds but, cool. But, but it, it was a So a are you going to dig into story. that character, go method on that, and, <laughs> and live it? <laughs> if I got higher... I might. I'll let you know. Okay. And I was thinking that. Yeah. I need to be the first to know. Yeah, that. you'll be the first to know. And it would be funny right? if she becomes a, a really a lesbian after, the, <laughs> after doing method acting, right? Yeah, Husband then, might sue. <laughs> right. But then this morning I auditioned for t two roles. They're both are criminals. One's really hardcore, and another one, the C9. That I really like. I want to see you do the hardcore criminal with the guns. The C9 one is fun. She's with a gun, too. I know. I want to see you with a gun. <laughs> okay. Okay. That would be interesting. You'll be the first to know. I, I know. want to, to get know. A, get a fake gun and start waving it around. Well, yeah. That's not probably public, not how you use a gun. <laughs> <laughs> we got a full house today. That's what everybody, that's what everybody did. Right. <laughs> yes, we have full house today. I'm so happy to see you guys here. It's kind of cozy. Yes. I like it. Yes, yeah. We got some warm light. I feel like I have a nice amber light on my face compared to the fry bin light that I had a couple weeks ago. I felt like I was Chicken McNuggets sitting, waiting for somebody to buy me. Um, but it was good lighting. It was good lighting. This is different. Every week we kind of play around with the lighting and see what kind of mood we want to create. Create a sensual mood or a, an upbeat mood or, you know, kind of a serious, just serious mood. So, so I don't know what kind of mood we've got this week. What kind of mood are you, are you in, Chris? I'm in a good mood. Um, a little bit wacky today. Yes, I know. Uh -oh. <laughs> I know. Would, would, you, would to, you like us? To, would you like to talk about it? Well, no. <laughs> but but we have Alex here who who does impersonations. So then I started crawling into it, doing my impersonations, which puts me in a little bit of a wacky, wacky mood. Well, we're we're in our we're in our bunker here right now at Infowars.com. It's a uh, we're we're at the uh, we're at the home of where. Uh, Sex trafficking in, in Hollywood happens everywhere, up in the Hollywood Hills, and 
we got to stop it right now at Infowars.com. Get all the information you need. we got we got all the supplements, all the pills you need right there at Infowars.com to, to stop these Satanists trying to kill our children here in Hollywood at Infowars.com. Sponsored by Infowars.com. Hey, I didn't know I was on that podcast. <laughs> <laughs> and Wendy, I'm excited to have you here today. Thank you. Um, not that I've had you. I'm so excited to have you here today. Um, <laughs> Because thanks for clarifying. <laughs> <laughs> See, I told you I'm in one of those moods. Um, because there's a lot of conversation that we had on the pre-show about your your background, and it's really intriguing, really intriguing. So I can't wait to just dig into it. What do you want to know? Everything. <laughs> I want to know it all. Okay, which one do you want to know first? The sex, love, or cops? <laughs> I like the idea of twisting them all together and making it one, sex, love, and cops. That's what I did in my memoir. That's great. Yeah. So how old were you when you was became a cop? a cop? Yeah, I was 19. I did it for five years. So Teenager. I was a cop was, at 19. <laughs> Picture a 19-year-old Australian cop. With legs a like this. A teenager's dream. <laughs> for sure. Well, I, I did get asked out by the criminals, which was pretty weird. <laughs> Really? They, yeah. They, Tell actually us about you, it. they actually wanted you to handcuff them, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, kind of. It was. Yeah. There but was, you did. She did anyway. She probably handcuffed them first, then yeah. released Ooh. them and got asked. Actually, I didn't even think about that getting yeah. handcuffed. The first person I handcuffed was a 16-year-old girl. Oh. Who was uh, going crazy? She. I can't even remember what we were arresting her for, but. She was kicking everybody and and mm. yelling out at the same time we were arresting her. Uh, I want IID, which is Internal Investigations Department. Wow, really? So she'd obviously been through the ringer before, and yeah, so that was an interesting experience. And what city was this in? This was in Melbourne, Australia. Okay, sound yeah. like it could be in LA or New York. Yeah, yeah. Or New Orleans. It's like an everyday right? occurrence here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, we didn't want to handcuff her, but she was kicking and screaming, and you know, mm -hmm. we really had no choice. And then when we put her in the back of the police car, she was trying to kick out the windows, and yeah. Wow. And she was only sixteen. It was really was crazy. she on something? Um, I don't even know. I just remember that was my first tank off experience. So that was your first caller? <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. What about the guys? I mean, that they. I'm sure these gentlemen want to know how you cuff the guys. Yes. Oh. <laughs> well, it's all about the cuff. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, it was interesting, actually, because I was a really nice cop, I thought. So I would ask them to put their hands behind their back or get into the police car and we're going to go. I would have just put them behind my back as soon as I saw you. Well, they did mostly. <laughs> and, uh, you know, because I was being nice and said, we're going to go down the station for a chat. So. A chat or a check? Chat. Oh, okay. A talk. And uh, most of the time they got in. And so. Because I would have said I'm ready for my cavity search. Go ahead. <laughs> well, I was telling you before uh, that, that in Australia, females search females and males search males but it's I, so boring well i did have an interesting experience but um about uh the the sergeants at my station tried to play tricks on me because i was so naive i was 19 and they'd called me gullible's gullible's travels so everything <laughs> that you know they were making jokes all the time but we had this i worked in an area kind of like hollywood you know so we had uh, a lot of tourism but a lot of street prostitutes so there was this one uh, transvestite, I think it's called. I mean, I'm really bad with labels, but uh, yeah, right she was um, halfway through, you know, taking hormones, so had the boobs, but not the um, the chop yet. And uh, her name was Robin Wright, actually, which was pretty interesting. But uh, anyway, I got asked to strip search her, and uh, halfway through, I realised. She had quite a big Adam's apple and... Quite the shoulders. Yeah, yeah. and, uh, <laughs> and she, you know, she was really nice, though, and being very flirtatious with me. And But then I could see the win through the window that the sergeant was kind of, you know, trying to see through, you know, to, for me to be like, oh, my he God. He was peeping is what you're saying. He was. He, he was, was peeping. peeping, yeah. 
And halfway he was being th- a voyeur. He was, and thought that I would get caught and shocked. And but anyway, halfway through, I said, "Robin, have you had the operation yet?" And she said, "No." So mm-hmm. I said, "I'm going to get a male officer." <laughs> so that's what happened. Yeah. Your first <laughs> caller. Oh, oh that boy. wasn't your first caller, was it? Um, well, no. Well, actually, she was charged with armed robbery because she was a street prostitute, and she was um, getting her Johns to go down an alleyway and then two young guys would come with tomahawks and rob them for their watches and money but wow. most wouldn't report it because the embarrassment of it yeah so if you're a john out there watching don't go down dark alleys yeah yeah keep it safe be somewhere where there's still some people around protect yourself i mean because you know i think prostitution is probably the oldest profession in the world one of them mm-hmm. um and there's, so there's always going to be Johns out there. So protect yourself, you know? Don't be stupid. Take Do advice it smart. from Chris. Be smart. <laughs> Not that I was ever a John. I heard about it. Yeah. Sure. Wendy told me. Well, yeah. <laughs> so how does a, a 19-year-old girl in Australia decide? And, 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 you know, so the way you look, I mean, you could have immediately went into modeling. Thank you. Aww. Acting, of course you did. Um, you've done it all since. But at that point, you said, no, I want to be a cop. So what, what was the motivation behind that? Because that's a serious decision because it's a dangerous profession. Yeah, I didn't think too much about the danger at the time. But, uh, you know, I wanted to be a lawyer. I wanted to help people. And then I didn't want to go to school for that long. So I thought, okay, I'll become a cop. And uh, But... Backtracking a little bit, I, when I was a child, I used to play act, you know, um, make shows up. and So I always wanted to be an actress, I think, but never had the path that that was a career. You know, my family didn't think that was a career yeah. option. So, it's hard. Yeah, so I ended up becoming a cop and, uh, you know, I was really wanted to help people. but And I was also interested, every time I saw a police car, I wanted to know what was going on and you know what was happening so there was a bit of that as well and then once I joined you know after five years I was still I don't know if the right word is enjoyed the job but you know I found it interesting and you know I did undercover as a prostitute as well and a few wow. things so oh, maybe wow. I didn't know that, that led me. you have okay, any pictures, so hold on. Hold on. Any pictures so, you can show to Chris so how did you prepare yourself to be an undercover prostitute well the funny thing is my sergeant said hey it's not like pretty woman just uh you know look rough yes no, that's exactly <laughs> have your hair all over your head that's okay. exactly exactly so like you know, a little Jake? tear in your stocking wait how, how do you know oh you gotta make a living somehow no, he watches a lot of tv <laughs> so tv I, yeah no so it, it was kind of like he just said don't wash your hair for a few days oh wow um, because, i don't like those types of prostitutes well um, <laughs> well unfortunately most of the prostitutes on the street at that time this was in the 80s uh were um, heroin addicts, you know, and mm. so it was, and so they were. So know, their hygiene wasn't up to no, snuff. It was, a, it was a real Teeth uh, great. difficult, <laughs> difficult, uh, you know, revolving circle because they, you know, do what they were doing to get the hits, yeah. and then <coughs> they needed the hit to do what they were doing. So you know, it was a very, it was very sad, you know. But uh, but anyway, so every now and then we would. Do what was called a clean-up operation on the streets, and uh, wait, clean-up operations. So does so, that mean like you, you get rid of all the prophylactics and stuff? Well, it wasn't the co- it wasn't really the prostitutes. It was really the the Johns, the you know, because oh, it, the people you mean, clean up mm-hmm. the people. So it was to sort of stop because it was illegal. Street prostitution was illegal. So, but it was fairly I su- condoned, I suppose. But every six months we'd do that. So that's what my undercover job once was to and then yeah how many times how many times did you go undercover a few but um it was interesting i could have made a lot of money it was like as a prostitute you mean it was busy i was busier than i what was the going (laughs) rate back then yeah what was the going rate i I can't remember but but the whole thing the whole thing was you're good we had to say um we had to um we had to say, you know, what do you want, you know, how much, and then 
pull out our badge, which was called a Freddy, and then, um, I don't know why, don't a ask Freddy. me why, <laughs> and then that's what we called it, and then our sergeant or, uh, you know, would come from the shadows and arrest the, the, the John. Yeah. Yeah, so, um, and they'd just get a, a fine, but one time there was someone that had just, it was quite potentially dangerous, because someone had just done an armed robbery and had a shotgun in the back, and almost ran over a policewoman, so. Wow. So yeah, so it was. I was going to ask you, what was the most dangerous moment in your law enforcement career? Gosh, people always ask me that, and I always forget, you know. Um, but there's a lot. Of, there was a lot of potentially dangerous situations. I think the the scariest one for me was when I thought I was going to be shot, um, and it was it was uh, about. Um, it was about a month after I'd just actually travelled in America and come back. And while I was in America, there was a shooting of two young policemen. Um, they were ambushed and shot and killed, and I knew them. And so we were down on a dark alley one night, and there was a car with the motor running. And you know, we pulled up, and over the loudspeaker said, "You know, get out of the car because we're checking on the person." And they wouldn't get out for a long time, so but. So finally we had our firearms drawn and remember, you know, this is the thing that people don't realise, it's all what's happened just before, you know, we're a week before, a few weeks before we knew two young cops had been ambushed and killed so the adrenaline's mm -hmm. very high and then we kept saying to this man, you know, put your arms where we can see them and I remember he went like this in his pocket, jacket pocket and I thought he was going to shoot me and it was a split second between me pulling a trigger and not, and he didn't even have a firearm. So that was the scariest for me that I could have shot somebody. So the yeah. fear was more that you were gonna kill somebody, not somebody was gonna kill you. Yeah, I, I suppose. A bit of both, there. you know, yeah, a bit, bit of both. What was he reaching for? You know, I don't know. And that's the stupid thing, and this is what makes me so angry when I hear about the, the shootings. I mean, I'm, you know, I'm not defending these crazy cops, but you know, I would say 95% of cops don't want to shoot anyone. You yeah. know. Oh yes, no, no. The thing is, like, I, I have. And um, yeah. I know, I know. Mo yeah. Most good cop do not want to shoot anyone. Because you have to live with that, you know. Yeah. I I knew a couple of cops, and they said when they were police officer for 20 years, they never pulled out a gun. No, anyone. and and uh, so that's like really scary in itself. Mm -hmm. But you know. I don't know why this man, I remember he didn't speak English, but it's pretty universal mm. if someone <laughs> pulls you up to put your hands up, you know? And I just don't understand. Uh, and you can't judge unless you're there, but if you get pulled up by the cops, put your hands up, you know? Yeah. <laughs> just, Common sense, yeah. yeah. That's my advice. So here's the, the real question now. Um, let's just say you're a cop again. You're a cop. Mm -hmm. And I'm a bad guy and you've got me and but and you need to crack me you need to figure out what's going on what am i doing um how would you go about doing that so i'm like you know a wise guy you know cocky um you know what would you do so well and i'm talking about me like chris yeah. i know you don't know me well yeah but like from the the moments or minutes that you've already known me what do you know about me? Because you know you got to profile personalities, you got to profile people, you got to uh, survey the situation. Um, so what would you do with me? Well, I mean that's hard to answer because it's like, do I know, you know, that you have a gun or do I? Well, know I don't have a gun. Okay, do I? But I'm dangerous though. But how, do I know you? Do I know that about you? Yes, you already know I don't have a gun, but you know I'm like dangerous, dangerous person. Well, I'd keep my distance for a start. That's right. And I would, uh, like, if, if, and is the situation I'm supposed to be arresting you for something? I'm already arrested. Now you got to break oh, me down. You're in, the, you're in the station? You're interrogating, interrogating. me now. Oh, well, okay. Yeah. That's How would you, what would you do? Like, now, again, with me. Yeah. Based on what you know about me, what, what would you do? What tactics? How would you crawl into my head? Well, I mean, it's been a while since I've been a cop, but I would probably, you know, it's interesting being an actress, it's like breaking down a script, right? You would just keep finding out more and more information, keep asking you questions, keep seeing your reactions, and, you know, there's certain things, you know, if you're telling a lie, you can kind of start to feel it, that, you know, you're not telling the truth. And 
basically start to appeal to you know what you want to do do you want to get out of here do you want to do you want to go to jail again have you been in jail before you know all those sorts of things so start to appeal to your personal uh, comfort levels and would be what I would and there's actually some people that want to go back to prison like yeah. uh, I, I was on the train one time with this guy with like a 5150 tattoo on his forehead he was like yeah man I can't get a job nobody wants to hire me and he was like cussing yeah. and he was cussing in front of like little kids and he literally said yeah I just want to do something to get back into jail yeah, <laughs> yeah. some people yeah. are like that you know yeah. I had I can deal I, the outside world yeah. well, the, yeah. the majority of, of them are like yeah. that yeah. when I did yeah. my research that, that's what they say yeah. to a psychiatrist said that there's this criminal he was very brilliant he yeah. has a, a severe learning disability but no one knew about it mm -hmm. right. he can't read but when he talk he's so brilliant he's very yeah. poetic and and he would do things to keep himself in prison yeah and then they found they realized that he, yeah he's faking it so right. they let him go so what happened was when he like Shawshank prison, you know yeah. the old the older character he just he just couldn't yeah. handle the outside yeah. world you know yeah, yeah. yeah. so when, when he got out guess what he did he provoked someone yeah. so they can kill him and he ended up dead wow. so the true story well in that's a few the months thing. he couldn't get a job yeah couldn't, couldn't functions that's the frustrating thing and I think one of the reasons I left the police force is because first of all I was too young to sort of stand up and be counted I saw some things I didn't agree with Secondly, I felt like I was mostly putting band-aids on, you know, arresting the same people. Mm. You know, I would make a joke. It's not that funny, but the dumb ones get caught. You know, <laughs> that's all the time. But uh, so, so you're I, saying I'm dumb? That's why I got caught. Well, you said you got caught. <laughs> uh, so well, does that mean I'm you're dumb? You're in the station. Well, to go to. <laughs> well, I mean. I don't like the way this <laughs> is going. I, I think we should change that subject. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I don't think you're really a criminal, so it's a, it's a hypothetical. But do you think you'd be able to crawl on my head and crack me with the intelligence that I have and the savviness? Uh, I don't know. I mean, it depends. Like, a lot of a lot of criminals get away with it. Yeah. And that's the frustrating thing. So, you know, <clears throat> I left the police force because I was at the stage to become a detective where mm. you basically have to spend your whole life, uh, you know, more study, more... Uh, you know, being 24-7 a, a detective basically and I decided time to move on you know what was your personal life like when you were a cop Cause you have to read my memoir sex love and sex, cops on, love so and on cops. Amazon <laughs> so, so, why so don't you, Wendy you read it you read it Chris is yeah. an author of a book and here is the cover yeah sex love and cops I mean it's a phenomenal combination um, look at those legs. <laughs> I asked Wendy about those legs. They are her legs, which is exciting. Um, <laughs> it's a memoir, though. Now, what is the difference between a memoir and a novel? Well, it's all true. It's, it's all true. Yeah. Mm. So it's exactly what happened. And, yeah, I did. So it was basically, I, I never meant to write this memoir but I wanted to I was writing screenplays and I had so many chapters that a friend who had published a book said you should make it into a book and it's really for the real estate I want to make it into a TV series like Sex in the City but with right. cops mm -hmm. and sure. and but I was so na naive I was 19 and I literally popped my cherry so to speak love wise sex wise my first punch in the face by another prostitute <laughs> and, um, and you know my first murder my first uh, all of those things so what do you mean your first murder well my first not me but someone that you know arresting people you know going to murders and things like that so it was a murder case oh there was many yeah like basically this is the interesting thing that you know if you think you're in the army or a cop the younger you are you're first on the scene for everything and then they call in the detectives so we go to the murders, the suicides, the every single thing that you call the cops for, the youngest ones are the ones that turn up first, which is kind of a bit crazy, really, if so you think about it. Here's a section that I, that I just oh. happened to skim through. Right. Um, it's one of the air, uh, page 68. So it says, working for the chief commissioner or I'm not a bloody secretary. <laughs> so was there a lot of, a lot of sexism going on? Um, well, that was a particular kind of sexism thing, I think, because, you know, I was a trainee still. What happens is you do your, 
your academy and then you do two years of training where you go out on the streets but you're at different places and for a month I was sent to the chief commissioner's office where basically my job was cutting out all the police articles in the newspaper answering the phone you know police complaints which I'll give you an example someone rang up and said you know how come the police can get to park everywhere they want for free and you know I couldn't help myself I said so if your daughter's being raped you want me to find a legal parking spot before we come to help her so you know stop she hung up but um things like that so <laughs> so but i um i kept on calling my um sergeant saying listen i you know can you get me out of here <laughs> i want i want to be on the streets you know not yeah. not um answering the phone so eventually they yeah moved me out but but one thing that a serious thing that happened while i was a cop my um, roommate in the academy she accidentally shot and killed her partner <gasps> and mm. in a raid and uh, and mm. I made the biggest foot in my mouth mistake of my life I suppose I because I mm. thought she was on day shift and it was all over the news and I called her up and I said hey Pam you don't know who that policewoman was that shot her partner and she said it was me wow. oh. and so I started crying she was crying and you know it was really tragic oh, but God. she was in a, a her, rat partner, her police partner right? yeah oh, oh. and he'd only been married for three weeks he was very young or six weeks oh, and oh. it was a total accident and technically it was her partner's fault because they were they were raiding a, a house at like three in the morning this mm. guy came out with a shotgun pointed it at her and her partner came from behind the shadows to disarm the guy with the shotgun and it you know, went off and she shot her partner instead of, instead of the, um, instead of the criminal. And, uh, and the chief commissioner called me into his oh. office and he didn't know she was my partner and said, now what do you think about trainees carrying guns after this happened? You know, and I said, well, n you know, no one, it could happen to anyone. It wasn't that she was a trainee. She had a shotgun pointed at her, mm -hmm. and so what would you do? Like, if you know, she could, it was her being killed or mm -hmm. him, you know. And then, but then the most tragic thing was the shotgun wasn't loaded, but he pointed it at her. He's so he's stupid, that criminal. He's yeah, a, I know. Well, again, yeah, stupid criminals yeah. get caught, right? Mm -hmm. So, so what happened? Did he go to jail for life? Uh, no, she but she was exonerated, but she had to live with that for the rest yeah. of her life you know yeah mm -hmm. and, and so how do you um deal with the stress the anxiety that and it seems like at times in law enforcement it's probably easy to slip into depression um because of the lifestyle and how did you handle that emotionally mm. do you go to a therapist a lot after after you served no i i think um i was too young you know i, I mean I, to i was so young that i didn't it didn't hit me really yeah. what I was doing you know I look back sometimes and I think how did I you know I, like I wouldn't want to be a cop today seriously I feel so uh, the political climate yeah. yeah it's a very hard job no one you yeah. know like so uh, but yeah I, I think I just kept moving I suppose um, and I think if I I knew that I it was time to get out though like if I look back um, so you had awareness, yeah, an inner awareness true. of what you needed to do. Yeah. Can you tell me about meeting one of Australia's most notorious criminals? Why wow, am I putting all this? People have to read the book. <laughs> but, yeah. It's a sneak peek. Yeah. I've forgotten his name for a sec. He's very famous. Um, Constable? Uh, no. No. Uh, uh, on the back it's... Um, Eric? Eric. Eric. Um, you Banner? Know, well, Eric Banner played him. Chopper Reed. Yeah, yes. That was, that was a great movie. Okay, so uh, so Chopper Reed came in to report on bail. So in those days, when you got out on parole, you would I, I don't know if it's the same now or even in this country, but you'd go into the police station and sign the book, you know. And he came in, and I didn't know who he was, and he had a big handlebar mustache, and uh, he you know signed the book, and then he said, "Hey, you're pretty cute. What are you doing later today? Oh, How about gee. we go on, and on a date?" I'm going. I can't date you. You're a criminal, and so. <laughs> and is that is that Mark? <laughs> yeah, and Mark Reed. Mark Chopper Reed. Yeah, he's very famous. And so, when he left, um, when he left the station, I said, "Hey, Sarge, 
what was that guy in for? And he goes, oh, hitman, murder, chopping people's That's heads all. off. Yeah. <laughs> and so, yeah. And That's it? Yeah. <laughs> and then he became, after, he got, he, after a few years, he became a stand-up comedian. <laughs> like, wow. in, a, in Australia. Like, he's very famous. Yeah. He, cho- he actually chopped his ear off in prison. And oh, I think yeah. he, he stabbed someone in prison too. Like, he, but he was quite a character. And the, Eric Banner did a really good job of, in the movie. And like one example um, in the movie is uh, he goes and tells these detectives um, that he you know, killed someone and the detectives don't believe him, you know. And, and so, and he did make up half of it. Like he would actually admit to twice as many crimes as he'd done, you know. So yeah, he was quite a character. But I didn't go out with him, no. So with, with all of the stress, you know, um, and anxiety of that profession, it probably draws up sexual desires. Because um, <laughs> well, stress can do that. So, well, like, pre- did, tell me about, um, you know, what it was like having a personal life, a love life, being in that profession. It's, an, you know, an interesting profession. Um, and... You know, maybe any kind of love triangles or anything? Yeah, well, there was actually. Uh, a bit like Sex in the City, which, you know, I sort of modelled my memoir on, on that, you know, the chapters and everything. Uh, I was dating, and actually my ex read this recently <laughs> and was a little bit upset because he didn't know about this. Um, but I was in love with a young footballer, and he got... Uh, seconded to play for a team and it's basically the equivalent of going from um, LA to San Francisco so he was uh, playing for St Kilda and then got um, what do they call it when they uh, you know the team takes you on anyway he he started playing for he signed the country so like the minor league to the majors kind of thing yeah okay. yeah to over to um, to Perth you know to play for a team over there but I just graduated from the academy and he said come over and live with me and follow you know my career and I'm like you can join the police force there and I'm like no I'm not going to you know go over so I was very much in love with him but I stayed back and then you know I was 19 so I started on the side dating other guys including a detective (laughs) Um, and so yeah there was a bit going on there but you have to read the book to find out what happened. (laughs) So what kind of a triangle was it? Was it like a um, calm triangle or a Bermuda triangle? What kind of triangle was it? <laughs> Maybe triangle's not the right word, but, you know, like it, in Sex and the City, Carrie was in love with Mr. Big and uh, Aiden. I was in love with two guys at the same time. Mm. And how did it end up? Uh, I ended up... Gosh. Is it in the book? Yeah, you got to read so the book. So we don't want to ruin the yeah. book. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we could only go home and fantasize tonight how it how it uh, transpired and ended yes. up. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Or we could just go on to well. Amazon. Thank you, Chris. Yeah. Um, George? <laughs> uh, there we go. Um, go on to Amazon, and you can buy the book. Wendy Wilkins. Well, my fingers are in the way. <laughs> Sex, Love, and Cops, which I think is a phenomenal combination. Um, now let's quickly fast forward. You leave law enforcement. Mm -hmm. And then what do you do? Um, Well, I had a few different jobs, but I always wanted to be an actress. So, well, in between, I became a really successful realtor, which kept on stopping Mm. me from becoming, you know, pursuing my acting career because I got bigger and better jobs. I was actually the number one realtor in Melbourne for for a few years. That's wonderful. Thank you. And, um, And I really enjoyed it, you know. And I think the fact that I was a cop helped me because... I wasn't scared to ask for the money, you know. <laughs> sort of interrogate people in a nice way to find out what they really wanted, you know. So, um, and uh, so, you know, I mentor some people in real estate, uh, and I say, you know, time is money, and you really have to ask for the money because if people aren't prepared to to buy. You so, know, were you an aggressive closer in real estate? Like, did you um, really kind of? Almost like interrogate them and... Yeah, but they didn't know it, you know. So you were like Rihanna in her song, Bleep, Where's My Money? <laughs> <laughs> Not that, that tough. But, you know, I, I was a billion-dollar realtor before the million-dollar listing guys. Um, so, uh, wait, so... Wait, wait. So you are a woman and you are number one mm-hmm. in the real estate mm-hmm. agency. Yeah. And the second in, one was a guy. Yeah. 
Or maybe I don't even know who was second. So what are you trying to say, Tiffany? I see. So how, how was it? I mean, you know, it's it was, interesting. There was. What do you mean? What I'm trying to say? What do you think? There was a guy. Guy. So I worked for. You know, I did general real estate, but I worked for um, develop a developer mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. and did major projects. So we had a few agents, and there was a guy that was in the office longer than me. Always kind of knew more about what I was selling than you know. Quite jealous. That's and what I mean. That's what I'm getting at, Chris. Yeah, you yeah, hear me? Yeah. And I even remember that um, one time I was uh, started selling this development and some the so-called big realtors in town came into the display suite and they were kind of making jokes. Mm -hmm. And I way surpassed them. <laughs> um, you know, without even thinking, that wasn't my mission. I just really enjoyed what I was doing. And, and actually, I wasn't counting the money. That's the really important thing. I was enjoying closing. Yeah. The closing and and helping people actually it really I enjoyed seeing people get what they want yeah. and it's also building wealth through property I really do believe you know while you're sleeping real estate still is the money never sleeps yeah the way to go you know they're not making any more land so yeah and then what so then I you know I kept on having this bug and someone told me a, a few years ago that what you play at as a child is your vocation so when I was a child, I used to put shows on for my grandfather and I'd make my brother and sister be in them. But the funny thing was, I'd charge him 20 cents entry. <laughs> it's like a quarter, you know? And who does that as a, you know, eight-year-old? And you were charging him for what? Coming, you know, as an entry fee to come to the show. <laughs> and, and it was like your own little show you were putting on? Yeah. Okay. Which my brother and sister were very reluctant to be in, but I made them, you know? And so, but I just think back now, like, wow, I kind of knew it was... You were a, business. a businesswoman, yeah. even as a toddler. Yeah. yeah. So, but I always wanted to do the acting, and uh, you know, I was the lead in the school play and things like that. But, um, but I finally made the move, and because I was pretty well known as a realtor in Australia, I felt like, oh, changing hats would be weird. So I moved to London, mm. and studied acting there. I went to the Royal Academy of Dramatic mm. Arts, studied Shakespeare, because I really felt like it was a craft. Which, by the way, someone put on. Australians in LA the other day, um, just to digress, that, oh, I'm, I have someone coming to LA um, and they're an influencer and they, they need an agent and they're going to dabble in acting. That really made me angry. It's the craft. You know? It's yeah. like dabble. What do you mean dabble? Like yeah. I've spent years, you know, studying. Yeah, it. That, that's ridiculous. That's, right. That's so insulting. I know. I almost was going to comment, but I thought, no, don't say anything. Um, was, they talk about you? No, they, no, 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 it wasn't me. It was just someone in general asking on a Facebook, you know, um, do, do you have an agent that can rep this person that wants to dabble? <laughs> dabble. I mean, nobody's going to represent somebody who wants to dabble. I know, it, right? So that was, you know, kind of... So I really felt I need to learn the craft, work on the craft. But I will say that in hindsight, maybe a little less studying and a little more doing. You know, I was a bit nervous to actually do before the study. And some, in some ways, you learn by doing. So a bit, a bit more balanced of that, I think. So tell me more about Shakespeare. What's your, your favorite Shakespearean play? Oh, well, it's not my favorite. I, I, I had some embarrassing auditions. <laughs> yes, let's like, talk about that. Let's like, talk about the embarrassing moments. It's the so best. Weird, yeah, I, I just remember I um, did an audition for, uh, for uh, an acting, the actor studio in London. <clears throat> and I was, so, I was so green, but my teacher at RADA, suggested you know go because she thought I was a pretty good actress but mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I really did such a bad audition <laughs> I was um I can't remember which play it was but it was Mrs um Winterbottom I think or something like that and you know I was getting a letter but you know the worst thing you can do is mime and I'm like ooh, I've got a letter let's see <laughs> anyway years later I I just feel like Oh, when I think about that, I want the ground to open me up and swallow me. And, you know, that was a really bad audition. But while I was studying at RADA, some of the teachers were really amazing. There was a sonnet teacher who um, used to say, you know, Shakespeare was bisexual. Mm. <laughs> and, you know, to be or not to be, you know, and all these examples. And um, so that was pretty interesting. That's interesting to think yeah. about. Yeah, I really actually loved studying the sonnets. And, they're, and you know, they're the small poems and mm -hmm. there's some beautiful ones. I heard Shakespeare is a woman. Mm, I never heard that. 
but maybe. Mm. <laughs> well, there's a, there's a lot of there is some some talk that it was a number of people. It wasn't one person. Brilliant. But mm -hmm. I don't know. I, I don't think know. we got ourselves an idea for a um, a limited run show about Shakespeare. That is a great idea. Okay. Yeah. So um, I thought of it, so it's on air, so it's my idea. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Go Just for to it. remember that. Um, so. Um, oh, and then, okay, so then out from London, I was doing a little bit of theater, a few shot, you know, a few things, and I realized I wanted to do film and TV, so I thought, okay, where's the center of the universe for that? So I moved to Hollywood, but, you know, it's not that easy because you have mm -hmm. to you can't mm -hmm. work because you have to get a green card and all mm -hmm. those things so mm -hmm. it took it was basically starting over twice you know starting over mm -hmm. in London mm -hmm. and then starting over here how long did it take you to get an agent huh how long did it take you to get an agent once you moved to Hollywood you know I got one pretty quickly um but it was you know, he was really nice, but it was really low down the, the yeah, rungs. Yes. And yeah. getting Asians not difficult. Yes, it's just it an is. Asian that work. It's yes. Difficult. And, that, that and you know, <laughs> actually, you just reminded me. One, but he did commercials too, and I had to take my dress <laughs> off and show myself in a bikini. I mean, that's so politically incorrect now, right? Yeah. <laughs> so. Well, not if you're doing a uh, commercial a for like Copper Tone or something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. Right. Well, what was it for though? What was the commercial for? No, no, he, for, for repping me. He wanted to see my body. Well, was oh, it that he wow. felt like yeah. you should mm -hmm. have some, some pictures uh, to market for commercials in a bathing suit? Um, yeah, I, I, I will say I didn't feel, um, at the time, I, I didn't feel it was sleazy or anything. He was kind of professional about it, but... Thinking back now, it's it's kind of they probably don't ask you to do that now. You, know? you don't think? I don't know. Do they? It just seems but, like but these. Days. In the I mean, if you were going yeah. to model for Victoria's Secret, can you do that wearing a bathrobe and not exposing yourself? Yeah, but this yourself? wasn't modeling. This was an acting agent. So, mm. but okay. I I had no mm. problem with it. It's just like mm -hmm. it was. What was the first professional job you booked in Hollywood? Um, I booked a commercial. Oh, this was a funny one, actually. I booked a, a commercial for Warner Brothers. Uh, when Now, this will age me. It was, you know how um, we were going from analog to digital? So they were showing, it was that, um, the commercial to do with that. No, Time Warner, maybe it was. I can't, it was one of those. But I had to, um, I was like a farmer's wife. <laughs> and, and my agent said when, um, for the audition, don't dress up, don't be overly made up, you know, um, and do nothing. That was a kind of... Did you do like a hillbilly accent, like, hey, 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 Pa? Yeah, or yeah it, well, it was just like, <laughs> it was sort of like, be down, be simple. And, and the whole thing was, we're supposed to be trying to change the channel with the um, remotes, yeah. and it doesn't... Uh, um, you know, what's wrong? It's gone to snow and, you know, and then there's about the analog going to digital. So the first day was in the studio and we're walking along and something. And then the second day was in Chatsworth and we're, we're you know, in bed, farmers, you know, we're watching TV in bed, but, you know, pyjamas and everything. Now, I'd just moved from Australia and uh, all the camera people were making jokes. Oh, the next one's going to be nude. Now, I was thinking, this is so unprofessional. Mm -hmm. Why are they talking like that? But then I realized they were making jokes because, did you know Chatsworth? The, 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 the it's the porn capital yes, of the world. Yes, exactly. How did so, I know that? Yeah. So yes, that's how, how do you know that, Chris? <laughs> <laughs> so that's why they were making the jokes, but I was like, what's going on? Yeah. Yeah. Who cool would have thought work. Chatsworth, the porn capital of the world? Yeah. 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 See, not, not me. I don't know anything about porn. Tell, tell us more. Neither do I. I know nothing about it. <laughs> oh, and then I, that reminds me of another story. When I was leaving the real estate to go into acting. One of my main main clients, uh, or a very great client of mine, she was Australian Businesswoman of the Year. You know, she bought a property from me. We became quite good friends. And she knew I was moving to LA to study acting and become an actress. And uh, she said, oh, we just got back from LA and we stayed with a really good friend of ours who's a director. We should introduce you. And then she said, oh no, he does porn. <laughs> <laughs> Who was the director? Oh, Do you I don't know. But, but she was a really conservative, lovely lady. See Ron Jeremy walk in the room, right? Yeah. I actually met him. 
Yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah. And? Uh, he was nice. On set? No. <laughs> no. At a well, he did mainstream movies, too. Oh, yeah. Really? No. He did. Yeah. A no, few. At a club. Um, you know, on Sunset, I think, like, the Whiskey A Go-Go or one mm-hmm. of those. Yeah. 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 Yeah, he so. tried to hit on my mom one time. And oh, really? Yeah, my mom was like, no, thank you. No. So can you can you do Ron? I can't, no. You, you never tried? No, I've never okay. tried. Okay. <laughs> no, yeah, I don't need to be a deer in headlights. I can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> how I, would know Matthew, about, I know about Trump. That's about How would Matthew... Stormy Daniels says she's regretting she can't have my you-know-what anymore that I could tell you. <laughs> <laughs> she wants that orange you-know-what in her you-know-what. No. <laughs> oh, that's good. I'm trying to be PC here. <laughs> <laughs> so, so let's go a little forward. So you're you're starting to get work in Hollywood. Mm-hmm. Um, you were a cop, then you were a top realtor. You come to Hollywood. Mm-hmm. Um, you're asked to show yourself in a bathing suit. Um, you then book a job um, and start filming in the porn capital of the world. <laughs> what are you thinking at that happening. point? In, of your career is everything going the way you wanted it to go and what Did you was want to go back to real estate <laughs> 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 we'll go back to Melbourne <laughs> um you know uh no I didn't but I um you know I was they, they were joking and then it was really nice and it was actually a really lovely experience and I was kind of excited it felt like things were were going quite well but then it, I don't know it's hey and I was non-union then, so yeah. and then as soon as I became union, you kind of get more limited, right? Because yeah, you have to, yeah. And I actually became, um, yeah. I, then I started competing with because you know I started acting so late, so every job I was competing with were really well-known actresses, mm-hmm. and I just missed out every time. So who's the first well-known actress when you think back regarding that situation? Oh, I don't like to say those sort of things. But yeah. I did book a role, actually. Um, oh, I don't know if I should say it. You should say it. Say <laughs> I, it. I actually booked a role um, in a movie, um, and I was sort of one of the main characters. And I think Linda Carter was up for it. Wow. And Wonderful. Uh, yeah, and I got it because it was a really low-budget movie, and I see. they couldn't afford, afford her. her. Yeah. So they got yes. me. But it so was, it could have know. been Wonder Woman, huh? Yeah, oh, okay. and um, and it's funny. My initials are W W, and some people mm-hmm. used to call me Wonder Woman. <laughs> so there, there, there's so many like prolific Australian actors now. But w- during your time when you were, you know, starting out, were there many Australian actors at that time, or you know, in, in Hollywood? Again, I start. Yeah, I started so late, and there weren't that many yeah. here actually. Um, but I booked a job here back in Australia mm-hmm. for the longest running TV show called Neighbours, which Margot Robbie, that was her. Mm, mm, um, mm, every, actually, every main actor you could think of, Australian actor, was in was in that that uh, series, and I had a guest star. So I went back to Australia, did the audition, and I remember at the audition I said, um, "Car," like an American, <laughs> 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 and I'm actually Australian. So, but I still booked the job. So, but I heard it in my, you know, that I was yeah. saying a, in a, a word in, a, in an American accent. And, yeah, and I was with the two main leads. So it was a fun little job, yeah. I think that show's just been cancelled after it was the longest running show. In really? Yeah. It was like a soap opera? It was kind of a, a mix between, I suppose, a soap and Beverly Hills 90210, okay. I suppose. Interesting. Yeah. And here you are in Beverly Hills 90211. <laughs> yes. <laughs> How ironic is that? Right. Now, let's transition a little bit further. Mm-hmm. Um, you get into directing. Yes. Yes. I, Tell me more about that. And that was not... So again, because I started acting so late and there wasn't a lot of work, I started creating my own work. Uh, I made some shorts. Uh, I wrote the, sh- the first short I wrote, I played the lead role, but I didn't direct it. And it actually had a really good little run uh, on the festival circuit. We even got invited to Sundance, but not the main competition. It was called Occupy Sundance, because my short was called Big Bully Bank, and it was around the time, and it was about me trying to close my bank account to disastrous results, and it made me crazy. Like, I even made a word up, and I say, said, you know, you know how it can make you crazy, bad customer service? Yeah. 
And I said, have you ever heard of going postal? Well, I'm going bankal. <laughs> so I made that word up. And bankal? Yeah. You know, like postal, bankal. Okay. And bankal. Yeah. And it's actually based on a true story. I did try and close my uh, bank account and I just bought a property and they didn't close it. So I was getting bad credit, mm. not knowing. Mm. And so it was a bit of a problem for a little while. So, so I made a little little short about it and so that did really well and then I did made some mockumentaries and things like that and then I start I've been writing uh, you know quite a few projects at one project I'd been working on for a long long time and it was like a big budget like 25 million type of film and then I wrote another so you so let's go back to that so it's a 25 million dollar budget and yeah. what were you doing um, what do you mean what, what role were you taking on in that production? Oh, well, in that one, I, I just wrote it. I didn't think I would and maybe play a small role, you know, but to... So you wrote a script. Yes, it's still, it's still in development. But what happened was, while that, all of that, I wrote another little feature that I entered into one screenwriting competition and it got really high up, and that is the movie that I made, that I directed my first feature, which and has Eric Roberts in it. And what's the title of that? It's called Death on the Border. Mm. Death on the Border. So Eric Roberts and who Danny else? Trejo. Danny Trejo. Shannon Elizabeth from American Pie. Um, Frank Whaley. Uh, me. I have a little role. Hmm. Can we see it? Not yet because it's in post, but it's at mm. Cannes at the moment. They're, I I just got mm. distribution, um, and uh, they took it to the Cannes Film Festival uh, to sell to international buyers, and it did premiere. I entered it into one film festival, uh, the Beverly Hills Film Festival, and it premiered there. So you could have seen it there, but that was a few weeks ago. And yeah, it's been quite, it was quite a roller coaster ride. I tell you what, being on the other side of the curtain, wow. <laughs> yeah. where, and where did you produce it? He, here. In, so it was shot all locally in the LA area? Yes, and, um, and I ended up producing it by default because initially we had a, um, a crazy criminal producer. So, wow. yeah, who we had terminate, who resigned first, by the way, so after four days into filming, and then we found out he made so many mistakes. So, you know. Tell us about that. Like, what, what, was, what was it about him that you started to find things out? Like, how did it unwind? Well, he basically had a breakdown and started trying to extort us, uh, even though he made a lot of mistakes. And then we found out, like, you know how something happens and then you see all the the signs yeah. in hindsight yeah. <laughs> and you know the movie before apparently he had a break started to have a breakdown on that one and the movie after and <laughs> you know and so but at first you know this was my very first feature and all most of the crew had worked with him for a long time so I was going to ask where you found him so you found him through crew he found me actually through a casting director workshop and he um, he found you or he stalked you no he didn't stalk me but he he initially, um, he, his pictures he can make a mil you know, movie under a million look like a million, you know. And um, anyway, I, I don't want to, because the, this is the challenge as a filmmaker, is that there's a lot of people in this business like this. And by the way, cut to some wonderful people helped, you know, us get over the line and finish the film. But, you know, the, even though the film after mine, I'm like, well, why don't they you know, sue him or whatever, but he has no money and he has it, he has it set up that he's running basically a little Ponzi scheme <laughs> that, you know, just enough to get, get some money and then go on to the next. But no one really can stop him uh, because he, you know, you don't want to go out there because if you go out there and say publicly, you know, shame someone, they'd think, well, maybe you're, it was you, you know, that just just not happy with him and... And he's his sociopath, and sociopaths are very good at playing martyrs and all those sort of things. So, my advice from a from an attorney and most people was, do you want to be right or do you want to finish the movie? So we decided to finish the movie. But that's the challenge and why a lot of these people get away with it. I don't know if you saw a documentary that was just out on Hulu. Um, that guy um, Randall Emmett, you know, who's uh, apparently owes people money all, all over town. Well, this guy's a poor man's version of him. He doesn't go around flying private jets and things. But, you know, on that documentary, it showed he was one of his assistants was um, putting all 
this guy's flights and hotels on his private credit card wow. and still hasn't been paid back. And this guy's flying around in private jets. And But the reason why this stuff happens is because, you know, this guy had made a movie with Steven Spielberg, had made a, you know, um, so he had some credibility, like my poor man's version, had done some good things. And then um, you see... You know, his IMDb looked good. And mm -hmm. I think IMDb should be accountable for some of this stuff, by the yeah, way. definitely. Boy, I might get in trouble for that. But, you know, it's yeah. like... No, you're not. No, but you go on and you see, oh, yes, yes, yes. But a lot of this is... He actually got... My guy got banned from IMDb for selling credits, by the way. So, you know... Interesting. This is someone that I didn't know until after the mm -hmm. fact. So but he only lasted four days? Yeah. But still stri trying to extort us. Mm. And being an ex-cop, I think that's one of the things that helped me save the film. In writing, if you threaten to kill a film or pay me $5,000, that's extortion. That's a crime. You got him. Yeah. You got him. Oh, he's th these people are so stupid that they actually put... See, dumb criminals. <laughs> he you put it in writing. So actually, you know, we he can... He didn't realize who he was messing with. That's right. Mm. And, and, you know, sometimes... Wendy Wilkins. <laughs> cop, realtor, producer, actress, don't mess. Well, it's Director, like, can you say don't director, F with me? Writer. Because, you know, I'm a nice person, but don't F writer. with me. Writer, <laughs> yes. You know? yeah. Um, yeah. Because I deal with facts, mm -hmm. and facts don't lie. So, true, yeah. so you know, um, at the end of the day, you'll win if you're dealing with the facts. Mm -hmm. But it's it's just a shame this roller coaster journey happened because I just wanted to make a movie. Yeah, you definitely. know. And by the way, the movie is shining a light and inspired by true events about sex trafficking of children and domestic violence. So, can you imagine like a person that tries to extort that kind of movie, <laughs> like with yeah. little kids that it's their first it's movie? Shame. Yeah. yeah, shame, shame, shame. <laughs> Are you familiar with Tim Tebow? No. So Tim Tebow is a Heisman Trophy winner. Played for the University of Florida Gators, um, oh, yeah. won the Heisman Trophy, won a couple national championships, played in the NFL, and now he's a very spiritual person and he's devoting his life to uh, God, and but also um, to stop trafficking. Oh, I should, yeah. Uh, all types of trafficking of children, and he's a, a phenomenal role model, and um, I follow him okay, uh, I'll, on I'll social media. Him. So Tim Tebow, yes, he's doing wonderful things when it comes to trafficking. Great. Well, you know, the good thing is um, I had wonderful people and I was really validated as a director too because one thing this, you know, people, sociopaths do, he kept on sort of saying, you know, you're so lucky to be working with me. I'm wow. going to be the biggest director in Hollywood, sort of which of yeah. course um, should be an alarm bell. <laughs> and uh, But, you know, Danny and Eric love me, uh, you know, really, really were validating for me after all this bad experience, you know, in some of the areas. And, uh, and by the way, a uh, little segue, Danny and Eric were so excited to be working together again because uh, Eric got Danny his first movie role in Runaway Train. And so they were like a reunion and having a great time. And, and you know, uh, Danny's really a philanthropist now and, and doing a lot of things. And, you know, I, and I didn't want to involve anyone. They didn't really know about this all this going on behind the scenes except I did mention one thing to Danny and he said hey I know people I mean he was joking <laughs> <laughs> you know I'm sure he does. Uh, I he mean he was like joking he would, uh... and he goes and you're an ex-cop so we probably shouldn't talk you know <laughs> but he was like we were sort of having a laugh what was it like working with Eric and Danny fantastic yeah they were really uh, respectful you know and uh, and you know what was really exciting is seeing my words come off the page and the way they brought them to life was really cool but we had such a tight schedule, so we had to really move fast, you know? So, Wendy, let me ask you a question. What inspires or motivates you the most? Mm. Uh, you know, I feel like it goes in waves, but when coming back, even today, the reason I said yes today is to remind myself the reason I wanted to be an actress, wanted to do this, is I want to make a difference in the world. So even if it's one person at a time, and by the way, this movie, um, that's why I, you know, made the movie, and if it can change one person's, you know, life for the better, and it already has a couple of people, because there's a girl, the wardrobe lady, um, <coughs> when she got the script, she said, I hope you don't mind, I sent your script to a, a girl that I know was sex trafficked, 
mm-hmm. and um, and then she contacted me and and she's an actress and she said thank you for writing this if I can do anything to help even you know bring coffee on the set so she has a little role in the movie but she doesn't want to be I can't say who it is because yeah. you know she was uh, but that makes me feel motivated to keep doing what I'm doing That's great. I keep looking at your hand um, you showed me this ring on during pre-show but by the way you have a lovely hand I think you'd be oh, a wonderful yeah. hand model <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, thank you. I'm loving this ring right here thank you why don't you hold your hand up so everybody could see oh, I'll hold this one up too. this beautiful <laughs> hand like I like this French ring. Oh, manicure yeah. oh thank you this ring yeah. <laughs> this you know I have shaky hands by the way which my friends <laughs> used to say um, how are you gonna be a cop <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah. I've had them since they're not shaking right now oh that's good <laughs> tell me about about this ring right there Oh, you can make, it's beautiful. You're gonna make me cry. This that's okay. This is um, mm. it's my younger sister passed away. Mm. Um, I'm oh, sorry to hear that. Uh, th- I think three or four years ago. Um, so I have her jewelry, and um, she actually um, would be really excited about the movie because she knows more about. Like I, I always forget actors' names, and she goes, "No, it's such and such, such and such," you know. So. She w- would be really excited about that, and she was passionate about making a difference in the world, too. And she was really feisty and beautiful, and um, yeah. So what's her name? Fiona. Fiona. Yeah. And that was her engagement ring. Yeah, which, yeah, and um, and this, I think this was. We're actually this another. We're actually I'm actually adopted, so this was my birth sister. So I met her. Um, you know, which is even more bittersweet. Like it was yeah. twenty something years ago, and we became best friends from the day we met. So mm. that's what was really even more Sounds difficult. Sounds like a movie in itself, right there. Yeah. Yeah, I'm actually marinating on on um, the movie called My Two Mums. <laughs> you know, about my birth because I've met my birth family, and um, you know, and about sort of nurture nature and the experiences. Yeah. Yeah. If your sister was here sitting with us, what would you say to her? Mm. I love you, you know. Yeah. And uh, actually, that you were talking about depression before. Someone brought up depression, and I n- never really yeah. understood depression. But after she passed, uh, my ex suffered from depression, and I didn't really get it. And actually, she suffered a little bit from it too. And they got on really well, sort of talking about stuff. Whereas I was more like, just buck up, you know. Why don't you do this course, or you know get out of bed or you know but when she passed I had this um, little depression because I was like okay what's my legacy she has a child by the way so you know I don't have a child I at that stage I hadn't made a movie I'd moved countries my acting career wasn't really you know um, that big and I didn't have any children I was you know I'd broken up with my fiance it's like what's my legacy what who cares if I get out of bed who cares if I make a movie who cares if I get a Academy Award you know like so I really uh, couldn't get out of bed for a little while it's like why why her instead of me you know she has a child like Mm. but then after almost a month of kind of really not doing anything I saw this I think it might have even been on Instagram um, and it was just a quote and it said what is the point of life life is the point and for some reason it snapped me back out that just live you know yeah so cool like that yeah. yeah so how did we get onto that i don't know <laughs> but well yeah. we talked about her ring yeah 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 so but i uh but i you know i cherish the moments we had you know of course yeah and her son's really cool so yeah. we're and very close yeah and her spirit is with you yeah her spirit yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's what happened when when my cousin died. Yeah, and I was really heartbroken. And then w- one day, I think I have a dream, but it's not really a dream. But it felt so real. Like I jump out of bed. She said, "I'm always here for you." That happened. Oh, 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 that's happened. To me. Sorry. That's maybe it was Fiona. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That happened to me. Yeah, and and then, and I hug her, but she was ice cold. Oh. And then she said, "How about let me make you something to, to drink?" Oh. That's how my my cousin was 
Sylvie was very, very sweet. Yeah. And while she was making me some something to drink, she was sitting on the bench, and I was at one end, and she was at the other. Mm. And she has her legs up like this, and I stretch out my legs to touch her feet. Yeah. And the phone ring, and I, and somebody was saying, "Oh, I'm really sorry about your cousin's death." I said, "Oh no, she's not there. She's always with me, right, mm. Sylvie?" And, and she was there. She said, "Right." And, and I woke up and I was so tired as if I would just jump out of bed and then jump back into bed. Yeah. When, when she passed, mm -hmm. soon after she passed, I, um, I had a dream and it was, I knew it was, it was weird, it was kind of real. And she came to visit me in the dream mm. and um, she looked really healthy. She passed from cancer and yeah. actually yeah. orange was her favorite color. I didn't even mean to wear that today, but funny. Um, so she had this beautiful outfit on. When she was younger, people used to mistake her for Al McPherson. So you can imagine she was wow, what a beauty, yeah. taller than me, bigger boobs, and you know, <laughs> it's quite stunning. So, um, so uh, in the dream, you know, I said, I can't remember what I said, but she said, "No, I'm still here. You can still talk to me," mm -hmm. and it sort of gave me uh, some peace. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. So you talked about you just snapped out of it. Um, before that, it seemed like you had a very, um, I'll call it successful career and everything you've done. Um, but you had a moment in your life where, you know, you kind of get lost a bit, right? Yeah. So you snapped out of it and you move on. What's your routine like every day? What's your morning routine like? Take oh. us through get how you get your day started because you do so much and you take on a lot of responsibility which creates passion but also creates stress so how, how do you get your day going what's your routine like well that's that's interesting because it's i have two different routines i would say one is a day when i'm 100 percent on and one is a day when i'm 100 percent off like and, most of my days yeah and so <laughs> so i i really um listen to my body these days i mean if you have to do something and be somewhere you just have to go but like if you have you know to be on set or what, whatever um but i if i feel like um you know not motivated i, I will kind of take a day off and do very little because some days i I think some days, gosh, if someone was watching me, what I did today, they would not believe how much I managed to juggle and do, you know, like in the middle of a real estate deal, you know, rewriting a script, uh, sorting out SAG for my, you know, getting another, you know, legal document for the producer, for the distribution company, you know, talking to the editors, like, you know, um, doing an audition, you know, and so, and then, um, and then doing some exercise, walking my dog, you know, um, so... But then another day, I basically mostly sit on the couch and just watch a movie or relax. So that's that works really well for me, that balance. I like the idea of doing nothing and just sitting on the couch and watching movies. I think that's a great thing to do. What would, you know, I always wondered, what, what would McConaughey think of <laughs> that deepness of life about, you know, how do you get your day going or how do you get through the struggles of life? What would somebody like McConaughey Well, I like do? to go shirtless at the beach and... Uh, and unwind with my, my $10 million home and my wife and we just go all over the place and go surfing with Woody and uh, smoke a lot of weed and uh, get my uh, mojo going for the whole day. All right, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> I that, love it. That's the word, mojo. I want to get my mojo going. Tiffany, how could I get my mojo going? Why are you asking me? I don't know, because you know a lot of things. You're intelligent. You're, no, you're, I'm not. You're educated. Oh, you have. say that. Show us some of your CBDs here. Could that get my oh, mojo going? Oh, because, well, the thing is, like, I was using it because my, my arthritis was acting up. And what could we do about our arthritis? Because I've got some arthritis, too. You do? Well, yes. I, I, I use uh, this uh, relief bombs. Oh, I, I, I remember that. Made. I like that. Right. We, we rubbed some on yep. last week. Well, I rubbed some on myself. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah, you Where? Can. Yeah, I want some more. Where? On, yes. On my elbow and my arm and my wrist. <laughs> I just rubbed some on. Don't ask me on, why uh, I needed it on my, my hands because uh, my arthritis was acting yes. up earlier. Well, I have a sore you? knee. Would it work? Yeah. Right oh here? yeah. I yes. Can't but put it on. you can't. No, pull it up. It Come on. Well, I, I yes. I don't think I can. Yes, you can. Yes, yes you can. Look oh, at those yeah. lovely oh. legs. I just wanted <laughs> wow. to see her legs. <laughs> That's right, you pervert. <laughs> so you can tell they are my, my wow. legs, right? Wow. I'm impressed. Those are the legs that I'm seeing in on the book cover. 
I just want to see the pocketbook and the badge because that just makes it. The badge is. Make it perfect, I, right? I had to hand my badge back. And what do you call the badge again? In Australia. A Freddy? Yeah, I don't know why, actually. Why do you call it a Freddy? Kind of a what do you call it? A Freddy. A Freddy? When, they, when she would pull the badge on a like John. It was like slang. No, we, did, we didn't tell them You're that. busted. It was like an, ins, you know, I don't know. I have to find out, actually. It's a funny name. I have a very good friend here. How's this? So, um, he and I were in the police academy together 20 years ago. Well, actually, it was a bit longer, but I tell him, stop telling this story. Um, but he came here to do acting as well. He was a cop for 15 years. So you showed him the way. He was following your lead. Well, he contacted me um, and said, hey, you know, uh, I'm here in LA. You know, it was 15 years like later um, to do acting. And I'm like, Anthony, Anthony. And then the next day I went to an audition and his headshot was up there. And, uh, and since then I've played his wife in a film. Oh, he's in my movie, actually. He plays a cop in my movie. Oh, uh, wow. Yeah. And, um, but, he, yeah, why was I saying that? But anyway, he's, um, he's uh, an actor now and, yeah, used to be a cop, but he was a detective for a long time. But well, and, and I think, you know, we were talking about earlier um, about, your question was, is about, you know, when, when Wendy was coming up in... Um, Hollywood, there wasn't as many Australians, yeah. and now there's so many it's, prolific. Yeah, there's so many it's, great. It's actors. incredible. Yeah, I know they're the best. <laughs> you know, yeah. um, I think you know right now you got. Um, I'm thinking at the top of my head, like Margot Robbie. Mm -hmm. Kate Blanchett mm -hmm. is phenomenal. Oh, I love her. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, let's, we don't need to go into Mel, but, you know, Mel Gibson was a phenomenal director, I mean, actor, yeah. Yeah. Russell Crowe. I would yeah. think that, would you say Mel Jackson. Gibson is the one that really brought Australia yeah, on the map of Hollywood? Right. Yeah, I agree. So, yeah. I mean, and that was over 40 years ago. Yeah. And since then, it's it's been incredible and, um, you know. Is there a particular theatrical school that you guys go to where you guys have that niche, or is it just... Because you have so many good ones. Yeah, no, it's it's quite mixed. Um, it's um, I mean, there's NIDA, which is the uh, National Institute of Dramatic okay. Art. I, but um, uh, but a lot of them came up the ranks through, like I said, Margot. You know, she learned on the job, like being really? being a um, in this series, uh, Neighbours for years. Which you know, I did a guest star on it, as I said earlier, and just one guest star, I realised how fast they move. So it's great training ground. You did know? you cross paths with Margot? No, not on not on on that. But I have I have, um, she wouldn't remember, but I met her briefly at um, well, sort of like hi, <laughs> you know. At yeah. she, you know, she's so talented. I remember we I'm a member of Australians in Film, and they had a screening of I Tonya, and she was mm. the Q and A. And, uh, Phenomenal she, film. Yeah, well, mm -hmm, she produced mm -hmm. it as well. I love that film. And she, you know, she yeah. when she was talking, she knew about camera angles. Like she was mm -hmm. really uh, knew so much more than you know. She got that movie made. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, and then um, was pretty impressed. Heath Ledger. Yes. Uh, yeah, I met him actually. He was really sweet. That was really sad. Yeah. Yeah. Where did you beat him at? Actually, I met him twice, but. The first time I met him, oh, this is interesting because there's a really, um, she's doing really well in Hollywood. She's on um, Yellow Jackets at the moment, Simone Kessel. Oh, we're in the same acting class. And, you know, this is an interesting thing because I'll never forget a scene I saw her do. So she really had the talent, you know. Um, mm -hmm. People just sometimes stand out. So she had a little party um, in the Hollywood Hills and needed sort of someone like as a door you know, we call them a door bitch, you know. <laughs> and, um, a, an a door bitch? You know, it's sort of to check off the list, a very private, because there was a, an inclinator. It was for a famous um, Australian swimmer who she was friends with and her husband's a director. And Anyway, um, and she said, look, you know, I know you're not going to go crazy, you know, like, um, you know, starstruck, but, you know, the people coming. Yeah. And um, I, I think she just kind of said, I know you're cool. That's all she said. So you could do that and then come up afterwards and once everyone's in and have a drink. So quite a few famous people arrived and, uh, and Heath arrived and I didn't recognize him because, and I'd met him once before at a hotel in St Kilda, um, just briefly. And he arrived, I think he was going out with Naomi Watts then. But um, so anyway, he arrived and he had a big beard and I said, and your name is? And so he was so humble, like, 
that because I didn't recognize him. He was oh he um, he led you, you know. And I said, oh my God, he's sorry, I didn't recognize you. And he was just so. I think that was just an example of the kind of guy he was. He didn't sort of go, don't you know who I am? Yeah. Very humble, right? Yeah. And so. Very humble. Yeah. So that's, I only met him a couple of times, but I had a really nice um, experience both times. So it was really sad that he passed. Yeah. Yeah. It was. Super talented. Yeah. Won an Oscar Mm -hmm. shortly after. What did he have? Well deserved. Yeah. For For the the Joker. For the Joker. Yeah. 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 So. Yeah. Yeah. Also, the other great actress that I think paved the way was um, Nicole Kidman. She's oh yeah, she's phenomenal. Yeah, yeah. she's she's um, great. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So you had Mel Gibson, and, and then about ten, not even ten years later, because Nicole Kidman in the eighties was becoming yeah. big. So shortly after Mel Gibson, then you had Nicole Kidman. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what her first name is off the top of my head, but there's this actress. Did you ever see the movie Widows with with uh, Viola Davis, Michelle Rodriguez? Very good movie. Uh, she, Yes, but there's I just there's just one woman. Her first name's Elizabeth. I don't know what her last name is at the top of my head, but she's a great Australian actress. She plays this uh, this high end prostitute for wealthy guys, and but and she I guess her mother was the woman from um, All in the Family. You know, the played played the played the daughter. What's yeah. her name? Sally. Sally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. yeah. she's phenomenal. You know what I'm talking about? Let's no. Sally Struthers. Let me, but I'm trying to find. Let me look it up real quick. Widow. Yeah. Widows. Widow? Yeah. Widows. Widows. I Elizabeth. know the movie, but I can't. Oh think. yeah, 2018 yeah, I mean, film. This her is name, first name's Elizabeth. Oh, I don't. But she's great. That doesn't mean anything. Elizabeth Debick. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Let me see her face. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. She 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 stood out in that movie compared to every, I mean everybody was good, but she was phenomenal. Yeah. Yeah. So what's what what's um, next, for Wendy? Oh, wow. Wow. Um, and, you know, and I think that this is the thing about motivation. It, it's, you know, when you're busy, but not just the sake of busy, you know, I find when I've got a lot to do, I'm really motivated. You know? So the so. more I do, the more I'm motivated. So, um, so I have uh, this project, the one that, uh, that I wrote uh, years ago is a musical. It's uh, very uh, Disney-esque. I'm working on starting to pitch that and uh, and sex love and cops are making into a tv series so i oh, want can I, to can I be in the series can absolutely I have <laughs> I, you know so one thing the that, and on the yeah. back that's me when i was a cop i look about 12. Right? oh yeah i was i was looking at this <laughs> picture can, can earlier I be in she's too? really I want to play a criminal cute. okay this is her <laughs> yes. did you plan on making this scene? you can play Man- matthew mcconaughey oh, okay all right all right all right yeah but i want to play a criminal well i'll tell you one thing that i can't wait to employ all my friends that's you know it, when i was in real estate back in australia like with a d- selling a big development uh, half the people that worked for me were my friends that's nice because yeah and it's i mean why wouldn't you yeah. have people and it's like what um god i'm blanking on their names and they probably get you more mm-hmm. too what you're about so it makes sense yeah. to hire them yeah but and we're no friends d- now right yeah <laughs> well i don't know you said you're a bad guy so well, I play well, one on we'll, TV. Well, you know, we'll have to sort of you know what's boundaries, interesting? boundaries. So here's what's interesting. I get cast at times for auditions for cop Yeah, roles. I can see that. I can Why see you as a that? detective. Oh, you got you get that sort of, well, you know, you ask a lot of questions. <laughs> so, yeah. You know what's kind of annoying for me? I never get cast as a cop. Mm. And I re- really was one. Though I did just do a, a film where I played an FBI agent. But it's like... I really was one. Yeah. Did you plan on making this like a TV series or just a straight movie? You know what? I wrote, I've, I've written a few sort of jumping off, you know, um, from this. Uh, I feel like, um, and I've been talking to a few people about it, about it. Um, so, you know, ready to pitch. But I feel like, um, I really like the the sort of TV series idea of yeah. a cross between Sex and the City and maybe yeah. Law and Order I don't know yeah. because one thing I've really noticed you know and what's quite cathartic about writing you know back about then is things haven't changed that much there's still problems with diversity and you know and and bad cops and and yeah. crime and 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 you know, my girlfriends and I, we grew up watching Sex and the City and it helped mm-hmm, us mm-hmm. in our era to have a bit of sexual awakening and all mm-hmm. those sort of things. So I feel like making a series like this with cops, we can 
You know, my idea of uh, not doing a documentary but having a narrative form is still sending a message but not hitting you over the head with it. You know, and by the opening, being too preachy, right? Yeah, yeah and opening co up conversation yeah. because yeah. if you see on uh, TV something happening, then it might make you think twice about ju judging somebody or you know. Yes, yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. I grew up watching Starsky and Hutch. Oh yeah, mm. I I know. Yeah, I and, and Beretta. What about mm -hmm. when I was a cop? Mm. They used to call me policewoman from Angie Dickinson. Angie Dickinson, <laughs> policewoman. <laughs> she she had some sexy legs. Well, Angie maybe, Dickinson. I don't know. Well, yeah, thank you. Did. Maybe yeah. that's why. Maybe yeah. that's it. Yeah, yeah. I've got to be it. <laughs> I, I think maybe my legs are my best asset, I suppose. <laughs> I don't think so. Well, they're pretty nice. Oh, though. thank you. <laughs> What's, so how do people, you know, where can people go to find out more about you and your work? Um, well, I probably, um, on Instagram, I'm... Okay. Instagram under what name? At Wendy Wilkins. Oh, okay. Oz, O-Z, which is slang for an Aussie Australian. Wendy Wilkins, Oz. Wilkins. And I notice you don't see the word, you don't say the word mate. How come? Mm -hmm. Like this? this is it. Yep, that's me. Yep. Oh, okay. Yeah. And, um, and you can, on there, you, you can click on um, the... Mm -hmm. up the top about sex love and cops um which by the way was number one on uh kindle autobiography crimes for one, oh, wow. for a few weeks that's so wonderful. i can say great. i'm that's a great. number one best-selling author yeah wow, number great. one best-selling yeah. author and maybe if they Wendy mention Wilkins. this show and they buy the book i can send a there's a bonus chapter that i that's not in the book she's holding back on us oh <laughs> So if I buy the book on Amazon, I'll get the bonus chapter. Yes, I, I will. You hear that? I, I That's need right, your, I, I need your out. email so I can send it to yeah. you. Yes. You, you can use that. But you, I have to, you have to. <laughs> just stand up. You have to send me a photo <laughs> with you holding the book. Not I this will. one. I gave you this one. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> so Wendy, what, you're not using the word mate. How come? When um, do you properly use the word mate? Well, as an Australian, I, I think it's kind of. You, you get a stereotype of it. Yeah, I don't use the word, but but if somebody sort of says you don't sound that Australian, I I would go because I don't say g'day mate, how you doing? <laughs> I mean, my but, brother talks like that. <laughs> but mate but, is another word for like friend or pal yeah, or something. Yeah, you know, so. but um, yeah, I don't think you know because I've lived here for so long, yeah. I sort of forget sometimes what. But I don't think any of my friends say mate. But mm. but oh, uh, I don't know. Yeah, I'll have to check that, yeah. Okay. So we have um, another guest today, a returning guest, and yeah. I'm excited again because I think he has a phenomenal invention. And several episodes ago, he was on our show sharing this wonderful invention that him and I were talking about how we're going to get this marketed, and, and I'm only in for 25%. Um, Boy, I'm in uh, for another 25%. <laughs> his name is Hussein. And Hussein has this invention that is patented that is to prevent tooth decay in infants before their teeth actually start to um, develop. And as they're starting to develop, there's a high risk for tooth decay. Because let's face it, an infant can't really, mm -hmm. you know, floss and brush their teeth like an adult. I'm still learning. Um, mm -hmm. and, and that, you know, and I'm an adult, I think at least. Um, so <laughs> Hussein, welcome back. Thank you very much for and having me. I think uh, what I'll ask you to do is quickly again, because we have probably more and more viewers every week. We're getting a lot of viewers every week, thousands and millions and tens of millions of viewers <laughs> watching our show, that there's so many new viewers that they have not yet seen your invention. So why don't you take us quickly through it, tell us how it works, how you came up with it, what's the benefit of it, and why parents should buy this for their infants. Yes, uh, my my patent is uh, babyteethcleaning.com. I mean, to prevent tooth decay. Uh, I will demonstrate it for you. My invention is an insert that you put in the bottle, baby. Everybody has a different bottle, different size of bottles. Uh, and then the insert, insert in the is bottle is what will release. Yeah, I, I'm just assuming this is the first liquid, and this is the second liquid. And that second liquid is what's going to help what's clean the gums. That's right. We, 
uh, so this is assuming this is the milk and assuming this is the water. Okay. And is the second solution just water? Is that what second it is? solution is just water? It's water. Yes. To irrigate the, the infant's mouth. That's correct. Oh. So once it's in the bottle. Yeah. When, when the first liquid finish, I'm just. So the milk starts to drain out as the yeah. the infant drinks the milk. Mm -hmm. And is it is it through suction that will then create the second liquid, no, which is what? No, it doesn't matter. When, when the uh, first liquid finish automatically, yeah. the second liquid will be released. Oh. So then the baby will keep drinking, but now it's going to drink water to flush the mouth. That's correct, yes. And and what is the main reason for that? What What's the reason that infants should have their mouth irrigated after milk? Because the milk stays in the, in the, the teeth after 20 minutes, that will be uh, will be cavity. Wow! After that, they so bacteria can the bacteria grow the sugars create, in the milk, right? right and yes. obviously, sugar creates the bacteria, the bacteria which bacteria will decay see, the gums. Oh boy! That's that's why I nurse. Yeah. Yes. For a long time. Oh, you're a nurse. I nurse for sixteen months. Oh wow! And, and my daughter has yeah. great tea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this happened automatically. How did you come up with this invention? What was your motivation? Well, when I had uh, my first baby, I had to give her a milk during night time mm -hmm. and give her one bottle of milk. Then I had to provide one another uh, with just water. So when she was finishing the milk, I was giving her uh, water. So that's but how did you know that ahead of time? Was there something I that know, you I researched? I know I had a lot of articles. I read a lot of articles. I knew that uh, milk uh, pr create cavities. So I came up with this idea. So make it instead of two uh, combined with only one bottle. So now you're saving time, right? So it's one it's bottle. Saving time and saving bottles and, uh, and uh, the kids uh, that th they don't like when you take it out oh. and put another one. Right. So this they get kind of cranky, don't they? Yeah. <laughs> so you might not get them to take the second yeah. bottle. Yeah. They may not to take a second. That's what bottle. I was saying. How do you manage to do that? Yeah. yeah. So it took me a lot of years to create this. In How many uh, years did it take? Twenty years. Over twenty years. Oh. Twenty years. Good and things much take time, right? <laughs> Pardon me? How much? I'm sorry. <laughs> Good things happen to those who wait, right? Yeah, that's. Uh, I I hope to give this in my invention to um, kids and to to, to our the, uh, around the world. How what? old is your daughter now? She's uh, thirty. <laughs> and does she have a wonderful smile and she has, thanks she you for it? <laughs> she has, yeah, she has a beautiful uh, teeth now. Yeah. Did you did you patent this? Is it was it very yeah, tedious it, to it get cost, it? It cost me more uh, more than really? two hundred thousand dollars. Wow. Wow. Yeah. And I came up with the idea that I think Procter and Gamble would love this idea. Mm. Yeah. Well, this is not only one invention. I had different kind of invention until I got to this point. Right. How many different inventions to get uh, to that I had final product? Three, three patented. This is the third. This is the third patent. Mm. Have you gone to Shark Tank yet? I was going to ask that. <laughs> no, the Shark yeah. Tank wants the product that is already been sold in the market. Mm -hmm. So they, they want to see revenue already being they, they want oh, to see, right. they want Have you to thought about, and we talked about this uh, when you were here the last time, have you thought about going to um, certain types of shows? Like I would say sometimes they have home shows where it's like home consumable products like cleaners and this and that. And people go to these shows. They're in Las Vegas, Los Angeles, all over the country. And they showcase their product. So, like, some of the products that we see on TV now started out with these, going to these shows, like OxyClean 
and Flex Seal, you know? Mm. I mean, they all started at these shows before they became known on TV. Have you thought about going to shows? Good idea. Yes, but I think it needs a lot of money to do that. Mm. But otherwise, I, this is a good idea. I probably should do that. Because when I, I've been to these shows before, um, and when you go to these shows, people are walking around, but also manufacturers are walking around looking at what can we buy that's already invented? And then they go after that product. Now, sometimes you do your own self-marketing um, and you take it to the next level, but in many cases, it could be a large manufacturer like Procter & Gamble or whoever um, that will come by and say, we want it. And they're gonna say, Hussein, we're gonna give you X amount of money and uh, you're going to split some of that with Chris Sloan uh, for coming up with this <laughs> wonderful idea. And then you're going to live happily ever after. And don't forget your co-host, Chris. <laughs> well, I'm going to give some to Tiffany. Okay. I'll okay. add to my cut. Okay, no, no, no. problem at all. I, I love to. I love to. So where could I go and buy this now? Uh, right now, they can order it if they wanted to order it, like a call 310-560-4444. Say that again. Say it slow. 310-560-4444. Or they can go e email by email. Order predk at gmail.com. Predk at gmail.com. You want to hold Ord the box? Order. Order. Oh. Order. order predk at gmail.com. Okay. And so hold up the box. Or order. That means the email is O-R-D-E-R. P R E yes. D E C A Y at gmail dot com. Okay. Yes, that's, that's wonderful. And how much is it? Fifteen dollar retail. And how long does it? How many times can you use it? Forever. Oh. I think that's a phenomenal investment for the gums and the teeth of your infants. Right. All they need to two. It's phenomenal. It. Absolutely. I mean, fifteen dollars to ensure that your infant's going to grow and their gums and teeth coming in are going to be healthy. Yeah, that's priceless. Yeah, I should tell, mention that it's been uh, manufactured in U.S. Oh, that's good, yeah. And BPA-free. Local. So you, it's, it's made in the USA. Made in USA, BPA-free. And why is BPA-free important? Uh, otherwise, it's cancerous. Mm. The plastic is cancerous, especially for the baby. So, uh, so this is safe. That's why I I oh, that's true. I plastic made can I, be mm. I made a product in China. It cost me around fifty thousand dollar. It wasn't BPA free. Oh, gosh. So I have to mm. pay another fifty thousand to make it BPA free. Yeah. Wow. Yes, because the thing is like. That is not BP free. It can really hurt you. Because the good mm. thing is, I, I was allergic to that. This is when I was an adult. <coughs> I wow. eat something, and then after I eat the food, I got really sick because it wasn't BP the free, person. like he said. Mm. What would Mr. Trump think about BPA? <laughs> <laughs> it's not. It's not only the bottle. Anything, it's fantastic. That anything I could tell you. plastic it should be BPA free. Mm -hmm. All plastic should be. All BPA. plastic. Is that true, be Mr. Trump? Well, uh, it's, it's not as good as my idea of uh, using V-rays to uh, cure COVID, but it's, it's, it's second, second, second fiddle that I could tell you. What about the bleach? Oh, that's what I was trying to get at, yeah, yeah. He's not, he's not a genius like I am, but that's, that's phenomenal, that I could tell you. I would, I would, I would, I would, I would definitely choose it over my, my Trump steaks, that I could tell you, believe me, because I just got totally bankrupt from those. <laughs> you know, that well, you for, the pre it. for the present of the kids, from two years and five years, they have a cavities, 43%. That's too young. Two years old, you start yeah. growing cavities. And, okay. and when the kids or the infant or babies, mm -hmm. they have a cavity more than three, mm -hmm. they go mm -hmm. through anesthesia. Mm. See, so that, it's not worth it. I nurse for mm. 16 months. Yeah, yeah I don't think anesthesia is sacrifice. a good thing to... No, no. It's costly, it's dangerous, it's not healthy. So... I think this is, this is a good idea yeah. to invest. And I think it's a good thing, too, because if you have something like that, and at a, at a young age when they start developing teeth and they're eating certain foods, I mean, you know, in the United States especially, there's a lot of sugar in foods. So if we're eating, you know, maybe some sugary cereal, they could still suck on the bottle and get some water out of it at the end and, and kind of rinse their mouths. 
Yeah, but after I think after two years of age, they using a zippy cup. A zippy cup. Zippy cup. So this can go to zippy cup too. Oh wow! So it's actually adaptable in a zippy cup. So now, what are the age groups yeah. of a zippy cup user? Until I think five years old. Yeah, this is zippy oh, cup. That's it. Like yeah. so, they stop using it at five. No, uh, yeah, I think around that. So oh. this is a zippy cup. Because I'm still you using one. You can't put it this <laughs> Now I'm embarrassed. Yeah, this, this is a zippy cup. You can put this uh, insert over here. Wow. Genius. And suck it from here. And uh, you know the insert is adjustable. Do you have anything that will work with a hookah? No. <laughs> How about a bong? Because you might save thousands and thousands of bong users' teeth. Just thinking. And, and if we go that route, Hussein, yeah. that was it my idea. That would be a top seller in California. That was so my idea. What is the percentage you want? Uh, For that one, that's, it's going to be about 65% on that wow. one. Yeah. <laughs> that's all. It's just business, well, This is though. a tough Nothing business personal. partner here. And, and what Nothing do I personal. get from it? You'll get a piece of my action. <laughs> yes, because you'll be doing the infomercial. Well, that's cool. You'll, you'll be puffing the bong, saying, look at my teeth. <laughs> and she's got beautiful teeth, so it's going to work. Yeah. Do, you think, do you think you'll be okay sucking on a bong? Depends. <laughs> How much you know, I'm going to get well, paid for? We'll it. talk about it after depends. the show. Okay, we'll talk about it after the show. <laughs> well, Hushane, thank you for coming again. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Saving uh, uh, the... I hope you get... Uh, 25% of the... Oh, I hope so, too. <laughs> I hope so, too. I'm banking on it, literally. Um, it's a great invention. Yeah. But you're saving, sure. you're saving children's gums and teeth. And I think we talked about earlier what, what some of our passions were in life. And obviously, this is a passion of yours. And, and it's driven you to spend 20-plus years and hundreds of thousands of dollars. So we know that's got to be a passion. Sure. So thank you so much for thank coming you, thank on. Thank you very much, indeed. You, you know that this is so it fits every size oh yeah. how about that there's more <laughs> no is yeah is so is fit uh most of the bottles in the market you could probably put that in any type of yeah, container even for adults because think about it if you're an adult the stuff we drink coffee and <laughs> citrus juices we still should be irrigating our mouths mm -hmm. definitely so i think we could use that for just about anything mm -hmm. even Absolutely. if you know you have a flask with some vodka in it <laughs> how about that and we had Wendy here today Wendy Wilkins author of the memoirs and I still want to know what the difference is between a memoir and a novel but um, the a memoir, memoir is, is the like truth. a diary it's yes. the truth exactly. now you, you have her diary of her sex Ooh, love and cops I'm okay? gonna read it all I'm gonna expose this memoir um, it's my memory of what happened yeah it's her memoir as a cop um, Busting prostitution rings and working with the most deviant and dangerous people in Australia. Um, sex, love, and cops. Then in the uh, entertainment industry, writing, directing, producing, acting. I'm impressed that I'm even in your presence. Thank you. Yes, and Wendy's very nice being here. She won't forget actually, about me. It's an honor being here. So don't forget about Chris. Don't forget He's about very the sensitive. And don't forget about all the any of us. Project. No well, pressure. You can follow her on Instagram. Yeah, like we'll I follow did. Every, yeah. each other. When, I'm yeah, going yeah, to follow Wendy everywhere. <laughs> and oh, oh, okay. Now I'm getting a little. She's eating her pepper spray out right little, now. A little worried, but um, <laughs> and don't forget. Yeah, you can follow me on Insta, and I'll start um, once we do know where we're going to release the movie Death on the Border. Mm -hmm. Um, please, everybody. Uh, I want to be there. Watch it. Watch it it'll out, be sure. it'll be streaming, but I'm not sure where. Great. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Great. My movies will be streaming too. I will email you the details because I'm Perfect. sure Chris is bored from listening to no, it. No, I'm <laughs> excited because she's booking more work than than no, no, Tom no. Cruise. Well, we can um, all follow it, and that's hard yeah. to do. <laughs> and Chase, thanks for coming. Thank you, absolutely. And Wait, Donald, look, 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 I want to ask Chase Fantastic. some questions. Yeah. Okay, sure. Chase, <laughs> I love your imitation of Mr. Trump. That was really, really Thank wonderful. You. So can I ask you, who's your favorite po podcaster now? Podcaster? Yeah. I listen to Bill Burr a lot, uh, the comedian. I, I can mimic him pretty good, too. Yeah. Go on. Then. Give us a little Bill. Um, <laughs> I can do his laugh. He goes, <laughs> 
he always laughs like that. Um, I've met him a couple of times. He's really down. I saw him at the comedy store. Yeah, me too. Phenomenal. Yeah. Yes. yeah. And tell us something about that, something that you think is true, but nobody else agree with you on it. And don't true. be shy. Yes. Oh, yeah. Just be like well, Chris. Actually, you just tell you know the whole what? world. I am going to be doing open mic soon, so I'll share my material there on that because. Uh, When? Uh, I'm actually going to go Tuesday. Uh, I don't want to say where yet, till because I don't want to. I don't want people to see me bomb the first time because <laughs> I'm just starting out. So, but I'm going to be doing impressions of uh, comic characters like. Uh, The first one I'm gonna do is Bane from The Dark Knight. I could do Bane. Objectality, really powerful deceptions of the initiated, and uh, yeah. But I'm, I have some original material that I'm gonna wait till it's it's out there in public. Very cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very so. cool. And then we'll have you it, back. It's, it's, it's gonna be like Bane, like as an everyday guy, you know, like that, even though he's a total psychopath. <laughs> so it's gonna be that. It's gonna be that. You type. parked in my spot. Yeah, I'm gonna <laughs> snap your neck for for. Uh, Getting, taking my parking spot yeah that type of thing yeah i love yeah. it yeah <laughs> and what was the last time that you google what was less what was the last time yeah. i googled yeah <laughs> what was the last time you google uh why. probably <laughs> yesterday um uh i'm actually was looking for the open mic places so i'm gonna i'm gonna down the road also go to the comedy store and they have that every friday nice. yeah so i'm gonna mm. You have to have glass thrown at me. <laughs> That's okay. Oh, they don't do that, do they? No, I'm just joking. But yeah, yeah, <laughs> Gotta yeah. start somewhere. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So. And what should and, uh, you know? I ask you, what should I have asked you? But you know, I forgot or didn't. Uh, well, uh, my IG CL impressions. I have, I have a lot of uh, covers, music covers I do that I'm proud of, and some that I'm not. So, but <laughs> but there's some there's my impressions are on there as well. You can check out of uh, Matthew McConaughey, uh, Alex Jones, Infowars.com, and. You know, that type all of stuff. Right, so all you right, all right, all yeah. right. Living, L-I-V-I-N. Yeah. We're so just you, living. Yeah, so you can check out my stuff on, on, on CL Impressions. Have Great. So, yeah. so where Thank can you. people go to find out more about you and your work? Uh, well, I'm just trying to get out there. <laughs> really, I have an agent now, and uh, she's, she's taking me out there. Not as many auditions as you, unfortunately, but I've had a couple auditions. Has she asked you to model in a bathing suit yet? <laughs> Uh, no, she hasn't. She hasn't had me show my man boobs lately. Yeah, you know. would you? Uh, what, whatever, whatever gets you by this town. Whatever gets you by this town. I like that attitude. <laughs> I'm just joking. Whatever Why did it I takes. Tell that story. <laughs> See, the thing about it is, is, and I know we're wrapping it up, but when I came to Hollywood and started getting, I was wanting people to ask me to take my clothes off, and they didn't. So you're more than welcome to do like, it right now. What Chris? am I doing wrong? Yeah. You know? you're, like, you're more than welcome actually, to do it right I, I now, right here. I have an interesting story. I can't. I can't, I'm not liberty to say. Uh, Because it was a coworker of mine, but do you want to make up a name so we have a name though, uh, even though it's not true? Terry, sure. Terry. Terry. Yeah, some coworker of mine, Terry. He was telling me because you know how the the Me Too movement, but obviously it was it's wrong how you know men were treating women. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There was there was a woman uh, casting director that literally, in order for the guys to get the part, they had to sleep with her. And Ooh, she's, and she's, and she's I an, like her. And, and she's an attractive woman, so most guys are like, "Sure, why not?" You know, like, what, what, "How do I sign up for this?" They've done it for free. But and what didn't they know though? What was the catch? Yeah. There had to be a catch. What was the uh, catch? Well, I guess they just she had, had a disease. I guess, I, yeah, right. Yeah, oh, she, had, she, she, she had gonorrhea. No. Oh but, but, my no, god. I'm just joking. No, I don't know. But uh, yeah, I guess uh, you know, you got to use your tongue to get uh, get in this business. I have no idea. Do you know? I may yeah. make a joke. I mean, it's so politically incorrect, but you know that uh, you know I was like I'd never do the casting couch all these people but yeah. you know then you think as you get older wow I've slept with a couple of guys for free <laughs> yeah know, that, I mean that, that I regretted you know that yeah. I regretted yeah. you know why well, didn't I just but, you did, but there was nothing one. at the end of the rainbow from it so here you can yeah. at least maybe get something out well, of that, it yeah, you know hindsight <laughs> so <laughs> yeah that's a joke by the way well no it's not no <laughs> Just got it. Cover. We're at the bottom of the hour, and I thought uh, you were going to say the bottom of the barrel. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think we hit that a yeah. few minutes ago. Um, no, um, but we had a, a wonderful show, and at the bottom of the yes, hour, yes, we do. And I think that you, we might embarrass. This. Oh, right. did we embarrass you? Who should no, I'm not at all. So, okay, oh. that's good to know. We go. You know, he's such a sweet, wonderful father, oh. and then us, and an inventor. <laughs> This genius talking about your deviance yeah. right now. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. He's just thinking, how did I get involved in this? Yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> I'm talking about babies and their teeth. Yeah. <laughs> and now we're talking about the casting couch. <laughs> <laughs> But what's, you know, 
maybe this is for another episode. What would be the perfect casting couch? So just think about it. We won't talk about it. But what would be the, the perfect casting couch? Mm, what kind of couch would it be? Mind. What color would it be? What would it be made mm. of? I think about that stuff. I have already have you have a mind. vision. Yep, a vision of it, like a wooden data bed. You know, yeah. craving wooden all three sides. Yeah, mm. and it's like at least had to be full size. Ooh, silver shades. Oh yes, I like silk that. satin sheet, really yes. high quality. The yes. kind that we don't, you know, slide off the bed. You know, the silk yes. ones, you know, the really high quality ones. But mm -hmm. you know. I like that. The first casting couch I ever saw had a lot of stains on it, so I didn't. Uh, oh, gross! Um, gross. <laughs> Um, now we're at the bottom yes, of the back. That's right. Somebody should have, with hygiene, should clean it. You know what I mean? uh -huh. But I think we, um, we, we talked about a lot of things today that made us laugh. Mm -hmm. um, we cried a little bit. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, we talked about careers and changing careers, adapting, um, self-improvement, how to get through depression. Um, I like the idea. You just motivated me today about you just said, you know what? I'm snapping out of it just like that. I'm going to live life. And I think if there's one thing I pull from today is that every day we get up, let's just live life, right? Yep. One That's day all at a time. we can do, right? Absolutely. And and realize how precious life is, mm -hmm. right? Because we don't know how long <laughs> we have. So you bet. Yeah. So um, thanks everybody. I I cherish the time with people. Uh, I learn a lot, and uh, honored to be in the presence of all these talented people for somebody like me. <laughs> Thank you. So thank you so much. <laughs> thank, you, thank you, Chris. Thank you. Thank you so much. So here we are wrapping it up until next Sunday. Filter 90211. I'm Tiffany Rothman, my wonderful co-host, Chris Sloan, and our beautiful guest, Chase, Chase Lewis, Lushang Broad. Lushang Broad, and Wendy Wilkins. Thank you, guys. <laughs> thank, thank you. you. <laughs> And don't forget, last but not least, George, our wonderful producer, George yeah. Anton. Yeah. <laughs> wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, hot, hot, hot. Yeah. Are your ears sweating yet? Yeah, you there forgot to open the door, George. <laughs> it was probably too noisy. Well, it was cold, though. Yeah. Um, it was. It was cold. It was well, that was go my Thank you. <laughs> so, you know, you follow the back. Yes, yes, Where yes. I, I live on Doheny, so yeah, yeah, right. nice, nice, nice and close, yeah. I live in North Hollywood. Okay. And I work in North Hollywood. I don't want to stay in one house. Oh, that's I good. I couldn't help, but I was a school psychologist for 25 years. Oh, good on you. So that must feel, feel uh, yeah. good. It's, yeah. It's wonderful. So now we do ceremonial pictures. Oh, yeah. Do you have one and a half? That will cherish. Yeah, yeah here. Okay, so... Oh, so I just go to okay. right, right. Okay, just go check it out and follow me back. Yes. Are okay. you trying to get that on Netflix? The show? Which show? Which? Uh, that. Um, all doing? of the yeah, I haven't even pitched to anyone yet. Yeah, that's good. Oh, wow. Check it out. Oh, you're a friend of his? Yeah. I, I oh my God. Thank you. Oh wow. So we need to, yeah. I think he um, interviewed someone recently. Um, yeah, a filmmaker I met. He was here. Um, uh, she did a movie um, that I went to see. It was about the girl that's the Australian girl that sailed around the world by herself. She was wow. only 16. And Philip Noyce, he did that. I don't know what the kids found. Like eight years ago, uh, like ten years ago, something, something like that. The kids found. He was really, really upset because the kids. It did well. The kids love it. Right. But you know, he thought that it went bad. And, <coughs> and this is right after he had surgery. He said, and he told me, I need help. And so I called the filmmaker. She made me thought that he's friendly. Right. Do the stuff. Because it wasn't good. Uh, yeah, good it, but it did well. Yeah, he, he the, the personal pressure of yeah. yeah it, it's like so strong. Yeah. 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 Y
stressful. And so anyway, so thing did okay. I slept with him. One time I came home, I came back to him. Yeah. I 